This is Signal Hounds talking RF, and today we're talking about the advantages and differences between the BB60C and the BB60D. The BB60C real time RF spectrum analyzer streams 140 megabytes per second of digitized RF to your PC utilizing USB 3.0. Providing an instantaneous bandwidth of 27 MHz and sweep speeds of up to 24 GHz per second. The BB60D includes the same performative features of the popular BB60C, but offers 10 dB more dynamic range and pre selector filters from 130 MHz to 6 GHz. Hello and welcome to Talking RF. Sean here with Justin Crooks, Senior Engineer at SignalHound, and today we're talking about the advantages and differences between the BB60C and the BB60D. Justin, the BB60C and the BB60D, super awesome products of ours, flagship products, people love them. Let's talk about them. In a snapshot, can you tell us what the differences are between the two products? Um, sure, the BB60C uh, obviously has uh, BNC connectors for the uh, 10 megahertz reference and the trigger, uh, whereas the BB60D uh, has SMA connectors. Um, the BB60C does not have a pre-selector. Uh, it was designed, you know, I think, something like eight or nine years uh, before the BB60D came along. And so it has, uh, there's a lot of features that we've added to a lot of our products um, over the years. You know, we've been evolving as a company and our products have really been growing and improving. Um, the BB60D just embodies uh, those improvements and one of, one of which is a pre-selector. And uh, what are some different use cases for the BB60C versus the BB60D? And I know that you're going to talk about price here, but um, maybe we could just be a little bit more specific with that. Um, sure, the BB60C is a little bit cheaper. Um, the BB60D, where it's really going to shine, is in like spectrum monitoring applications, where you really notice the difference that a pre-selector makes. Um, with the BB60C, um, to help with some second order products, we use a lot of, uh, we use push pull amplifiers, um, which takes the edge off the second order products. Uh, but with the BB60D, we use a, a true pre selector. And I guess I should talk about second order products a little bit. Sure. Um, so let's say you're doing a spectrum monitoring application, and you know there's going to be a lot of signals in the air. Um, but for example, if there was a signal at 900 megahertz, uh, and another signal at 1 gigahertz, and you were interested in, in monitoring something around the 1.9 gigahertz region, what can happen is when those 900 megahertz and 1 gigahertz signals uh, hit any nonlinear component in the uh, receiver uh, system, be it a, a mixer or an amplifier, they're going to uh, create mixing products. And 900 megahertz and a gigahertz will mix to produce the, a 1.9 gigahertz uh, signal, which is you know what you're trying to trying to monitor, uh, what a preselector does is it's going to filter out those 900 megahertz and gigahertz signals, so they don't have a chance uh, to mix to produce a spur uh, in the region that you're monitoring. And um, can you talk about the evolution of the architecture? What's taken into consideration when we're you uh, when you were looking at the C and how you could improve its specific functionality with the D? Um, yeah, so with the BB60C, uh, one of its, uh, I don't want to say weaknesses, but it, the dynamic range wasn't great. We kind of optimized the chain for, you know, a better noise floor, uh, given the technology at the time. Uh, with the BB60D, we took our time to make sure that the uh, amplitudes uh, were basically optimized for a dynamic range. Uh, all the way through the chain using high dynamic range amplifiers uh, and in a lot of cases very specific frequency or amplifiers designed for a specific frequency high IP3 performance uh, in the IF section. So we were able to really um, improve that dynamic range on the BB60D compared to the C. And uh, let's talk about the physical differences between uh, the two products. Uh, what are the differences? You know, the BB60C has BNC connectors, um, the D does not, uh, it has SMA connectors. Can you talk about why that is and uh, what brought that change on? Um, yeah, the main reason for moving to uh, SMA connectors was to have enough room on the, on the uh, front panel for a uh, LIMO power connector. Some of our customers prefer uh, external power input rather than having all the power come over the USB cable. Um, and also with the, uh, 
BB60C, we had a 10 megahertz in out, uh, and on the BB60D, it's only 10 megahertz in. And the reason for that is uh, when I use just an input circuit, I can make it really, really clean. Uh, but if it has to be in, in out, uh, then there are some additional paths that can pick up noise and you don't get quite the performance. Uh, on the BB60C, for example, a lot of customers noticed on external reference, uh, they have these uh, you know, little spurs about 3.9 to 4 kilohertz away from the main signal. They were, they were pretty low. I mean, they weren't going to you know, distort any real measurements. But if you were you know, trying to analyze the spectral purity of you know, a, a local oscillator you were using, um, those spurs could make it more difficult to get a, a clear picture. If you have any questions about the BB60C or the BB60D, leave them in the comments section below. Like, follow, and subscribe for more SignalHound and RF content.